at the bottom, I listed a Hashcat area. So Hashcat is pre-installed with Kali Linux. So if you download that pre-installed Kali Linux VM, or you install it on a physical machine, it's going to be there for you, and you can just start running it. Um, it's kind of nice to have it within Windows for a couple different reasons. Number one, you don't have to spin up a VM and have to worry about performance issues with your VM. Uh, number two is you have native support now for your graphics card. So if you got a good graphics card, you're able to crack passwords much, much quicker using a GPU than you are your, um, your processor. And you can make your graphics card work within a VM by passing it. Um, there's some prerequisites and libraries and whatnot to install to make it work, or at least the last time I did it. Um, it can be done, but it's just a little bit of legwork. Using it within Windows hopefully is easier for you. And that's, again, kind of one of my goals is to, you know, make this as easy as possible, give you guys as, as many easy resources to use uh, to complete the challenges. So the first order of business is you need hash. And in order to get Hashcat, um, I have it out here for you. You can just download it, which is what I'm going to do. Just download it from, right from the shell. It uses 7-zip, so you have to have 7-zip to extract it. Uh, but where I got it is I just went to uh, Hashcat.net. And on Hashcat.net, the latest binary is version 611, which came out, looks like, here in uh, July of 2020 and so i just downloaded that and i put it up on the class shell okay so that's the version that we're downloading okay, i have that downloaded it's in my downloads folder uh, so what i'm going to do since i have 7-zip installed is just go ahead and right click go into my 7-zip Uh, area here and I'm going to do extract files and I'm gonna, just going to extract them right onto my desktop and again you guys can put them wherever you want it does not matter this is going to make it easier for me today I'm just going to throw this right on my desktop now an important note here about Hashcat uh, for Windows is it's not a, an install it's just an exe that runs on demand so you're not really installing anything it's just wherever you put it you can run it out of that directory uh, so I'm going to go ahead and extract it. Show you right here it is. I've done this a couple different times, so uh, mine might be going a little quicker than yours. But anyways, basic process, download it, extract it to wherever you want it to live. Now, once I have this, I could start running Hashcat through the command line on Windows. I would just need to go to this path. Kind of got a, a double folder here, but I could go into my C, users, desktop, Hashcat 6.11, Hashcat 6.11, and here's the exe, and I could start running my command, okay? Well, if you don't know Hashcat, you don't know the syntax, it can be a little, I won't, well, probably a little difficult, but it can be a little daunting at first, like what are all these switches and what are all my options and all these different things. That's where the GUI really shines. And so in order to work the GUI, all you need to do is download and put it anywhere. Now, a lot of the documentation says to put it in the same exact directory as Hashcat. Um, I'm not going to, just because I want to have you guys be able to see the difference, you know, of the folders and see that separation. But if I was probably going to keep this on my machine, I probably would move the GUI right into the same folder. Um, <clears throat> now, I found this actually on a forum. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to find now. They used to have like a, a UK hosted website where they had this GUI uh, living, but that site seems to be down right now. So I did some hunting and searching and I found it on a forum and this was updated, I think as recent as a couple weeks ago. So I, I think version 1.2.2 is the latest that's out there. And if you find a later one, uh, let me know. 
and I will definitely share that one instead. Um, so anyways, I downloaded the Hashpat GUI, and I'm gonna just show that in my folder, okay? Uh, so here's the Hashcat GUI. I'm also going to right click on that. I'm going to use 7-zip. I'm going to use extract files. And again, I could extract this right into that same folder where Hashcat lives, but I, I'm just going to separate it out here just so you can see it. Put it on the desktop. And so now I have my Hashcat GUI, and I have my Hashcat uh, binary 611. Any questions at this point? Okay, so I'm going to go into the Hashcat GUI folder, and there is an application executable here, and I'm just going to double click and run that. And this pulls up the GUI. Now, the first order of business is right here at the bottom, your Hashcat path. Basically, it wants to know where is the Hashcat EXE. And if they're in the same folder, super easy to find. It might actually even pick it up automatically for you. Um, I have the folder separated out, so I'm just gonna click on my little triple dot here. I'm gonna browse to where Hashcat at, is at, and Hashcat is on my desktop under this folder, and there it is. So essentially, this is like a skin for the Hashcat EXE, okay? I have never gotten that error. Is that with the GUI? Uh, first thing I would try then is I would try to then move this folder inside of here. Actually, you can just move the files is what they recommend. Move the GUI and the config file right into the heart of this. Let's see if you get that issue then. If not, there could have maybe just been some corruption during download. Maybe need to try to re-download it. Usually my standard answer to that would be, oh, it sucks to be you. But <laughs> those are so hard to figure out exactly what's going on. Just probably buy a brand new computer. I'd probably fix your issue. Yeah. Couple grand. Doors or a computer? I mean, priorities, man. Okay, so, anyways, I'm going to go back into the GUI here. I closed it. Once you put that path in there, it should, it should stay. So, every time you come back to it, it should stay. Now, a couple of quick warnings here. Um, the maker of Hashcat GUI recommends that you install a third party temperature monitoring tool for your computer um, because you can cook your graphics card. Actually, we did that one time. <laughs> uh, we set up a desktop machine and we had like a, I don't even know what it was, like an RX 470. And we let it run overnight and it got so hot it melted the solder on the uh, heat sink. And so we ruined it. Uh, but anyways, this does have a built-in workload profile. Uh, but as I was reading on that forum where I got this, he offers no guarantees. So really, you should probably monitor, monitor your gear, <clears throat> excuse me, so that you don't um, make it too hot, OK? I don't have, I guess, a third-party monitoring tool that I'll recommend. Um, I never took the time to install one because I just never have let it run for hours and hours and hours. But if you know, that's your plan, 
then definitely find one or invest in one. Does anybody know of any? Yeah. Core temp. Core temp. Is it a free free bear free bear or? Okay. No, oh, nice. Core temp. C O R E T M P. Nice. So as a recommendation, core temp uh, for you guys. I know some of you guys' computers have built in um, temperature monitoring, especially if it you know comes with overclocking tools from the manufacturer. But um, you know, if you're a pen tester, if you're a, a red teamer, this is actually a big part of their initial engagement is to crack a password. And uh, what they tend to do, I guess from what I've heard out in the industry, is they tend to rent a GPU from Amazon Web Services now. Um, sometimes they'll have their own little password cracking rig built and they'll let things, you know, run for days, a couple days even, or longer just to crack that password, whether it's through word lists or brute force um, attempts. But anyways, monitor your hardware. Okay, so what we're looking at here is some options to crack some passwords. In the end, what ends up happening is this skin or this GUI actually runs the command line for you. So let me just give you a, a real quick overview of that and then we'll kind of dive into some of the options. If I start selecting um, some of these options here, Again, I'll go through all this in just a second, but I wanna uh, show you what I'm working with. Okay, and then I go over to this command line tab and hit generate. Based on all of the options that I selected, it generates what the command line is that's gonna uh, be run. And so for me, this was a great learning tool because again, I'm not a, a pen tester. Um, I'm pretty new to it, but I want to learn, you know, what the syntax is. So when I get into Kali Linux and I have to run it through the command prompt, what options would I be running? And so for what I selected right now, um, I'm running hashcat.exe. The dash A is the attack method, and the attack method right now is zero, which is just mean I'm, means I'm going to run a straight, a straight attack or a word list attack. Um, I'm appending a session name to it so I can keep track of it. The M is the hash type. Um, I'm going to use a word list. Um, I'm going to use a profile, which is going to abort if my graphics card gets to 75 degrees Celsius. Or um, I have a dash O for the output file. Um, dash G, I'm actually trying to blank on the dash G. Oh, that, no? Someone do a quick search for me. What's a hashcat dash G? Um, and then I have my input file. I didn't specify uh, where the output file is going to go, uh, but once I do that, it would um, show in here as well. Jordan's on the hunt for my dash G. Um, in my opinion, one of the hardest things to probably figure out is your hash type. Okay, when you get a password hash, and I think you guys kind of know how that works, right? We're not just attacking the password. We're actually trying to match the hashes when we're attacking a password. But you have to figure out what the hash type is. Now, Hashcat, I believe, will sometimes attempt to figure out what the hash is if you selected the wrong type, um, but that's not always the case. You wanna go and you wanna find what hash type you're working with. And there's a couple different tools in order to figure that out. And so in, ter in terms of my hash type, I got MD5, I got Microsoft Office, there's a huge list, right? So if I'm trying to, to attack a Microsoft Office 2013 password, because maybe someone put a password on a Word file or Excel file, I need to select that. That way, Hashcat knows how to attack it. 
if I have an, a Microsoft SQL database that I'm trying to attack and attack a password on that, I need to choose the appropriate option. So you can see there's a big, huge list, PDFs, PeopleSoft. Anybody know what PeopleSoft is? That's Campus Connection, essentially. So if you got a Campus Connection password and you want to try to, um, you know, brute force or password attack that. So you have all these different options of password types, uh, WordPress, WinZip, that you can go after. And we need to tell Hashcat what we're working with. So how do you do that? Well, in Kali Linux, and again, I'm telling you, you don't have to use Kali Linux, but if you are in uh, Kali Linux, There is a, a tool you can download called Hash Identifier, and it might actually even already be built in depending on your version that you have. This is a I've had a lot of success with, and I think it's relatively easy to use. Um, but you just go to your a terminal and you do a hash dash identifier and see if they have a, an example. And then you essentially just, um, in quotes, put what your hash is, and then it tries to identify it uh, based on its characteristics. And I don't see an example of, of a command. But anyways, that would be a good tool that I would recommend to try to identify a hash. Now again, if you don't want to uh, use Kali Linux, there are some websites. And so I actually just went out to Google and did a quick uh, search for hash identifier. And I've actually used this site a couple of times, tunnelsup.com. You put in your hash here, you hit analyze, and it will try to identify it for you. So I'm actually gonna take this password list here and I'll upload this to the shell too. That way you guys have something to work with if you want. I'm gonna go back into that same area. And I'll upload some uh, hashes for you guys. So I'm uploading this password list one. And as you start to do this more, you might start to recognize some of these hashes. But in this password list one, here are my hashes. They're relatively small. Um, so this is a really good indication that it's a MD5 unsalted password. But if I take one of these, I'm just going to copy and paste it right into that website. I'm always a little leery about these websites. I wouldn't be pasting hashes of your actual passwords in there because they're probably collecting them, building a database off of them. But I hit analyze after I paste in that um, hash. And it comes up that there was no salt. The hash type is either MD5 or MD4, 128 bits in length. The character length uh, potential is 32 and it's in a hexadecimal. So there's 32 characters here and hexadecimal, okay? And so, again, that was just a real quick Google search. There's probably better sites. I know I've actually brought been on some better sites. And here's another one, hashes.com. This one comes out actually even cracked it for me right away. <laughs> uh, the password is uh, Chastity, and it tells me that's MD5, so it must be well known in, in that regard because it already cracked it for me. So anyways, you need to figure out what your hash type is. That is going to be this option. Um, I'm going to flip over to the word list. Now, they say for National Cyber League, all of your password cracking can be found using a word list. Now you have to have the right word list is the key. 
Um, you can brute force, but they recommend you know that you don't have to brute force and you'll be able to find all of your answers for National Cyber League using word lists. So you have to have a word list. Now there are hundreds of word lists out there. On the class shell, I have supplied the Rock You word list, which I believe came from the LinkedIn uh, breach. But if you go out to, well, I know I can find it on Google and just look for a um, hash cat word list, I think it's a tool. No. Actually, I think I just did a word list download search. Yeah. If you do a Google search for word list download on crackstation.net, they have a 15 gig uh, word list here. It's 4.2 gig download and then you uncompress and it's, it's 15 gigs. And so I don't know how many millions or billions of passwords that is. It is 1,493,677, no, 1,493,677,000, no, it isn't, 677,782 uh, passwords. That's a lot of passwords to go through. Um, I've heard if you go to like DEF CON or Black Hat or one of those hacking conferences, if you bring, what did they say? If you bring two eight terabyte hard drives, they'll fill them up for you with wordless. And so that is, you know, huge key to cracking passwords quickly and efficiently. And so with today's speeds and graphics cards, you can go through those wordless relatively quickly. There's a smaller one on here, which, you know, you could download to get you started too. It's uh, only 600 and I shouldn't say only, but 684 uh, megabytes. And there's a variety of password lists you know, all over the place. So if you got one that you like, or you know of one you want to download, by all means, go for it. Um, I'm just going to work with the, the rock you won. So on this word list, you specify all of your word lists. I got this in the downloads, there it is. And you can specify multiple ones. Now, the other day in my other class, we got onto GitHub. And you can find some uh, word lists on GitHub. And I looked like a complete idiot the other day in class because I didn't know how to download these dumb things. They changed GitHub site a little bit. They want you to have the desktop app. But I figured out, uh, so here's a, a word list, right? It's just password after password after password, really all it is. If you go to the raw and right click and save link as, then you can save it as a text document. And so I have that in my downloads now and I can add that word list as well. Well, I thought I did. Where did that download to? Not sure where the heck it went. I'm not going to go search for it. But any, again, you could go and download as many word lists as you want, add them to here, and then Hashcat will use those those word lists. So, um, if you take a look at a word list, not all this way, but if I take a look at my Rocky word list, there's a couple things that you might notice. And the first thing I guess I notice is there's a lot of bad words in here. The second thing that I notice is that there's no capital letters. Uh, there's not any special characters typically. It's just straight 
lowercase password after password after password typically. Well, we typically know what users do for passwords to make them secure, and I'm quoting in the air, secure. They change their E's to threes, and they add an exclamation point always at the end, right? And um, they do those fancy things to make their passwords secure. That's where rules come into play. What rules do for you is rules will modify or tweak your word list to do those things. Again, add exclamations at the end, change your E's to threes. So with Rock U, I'm just making this number up because I'm probably wrong. With Rock U, let's say I have 14 million passwords. Well, I can add rules to it and turn those 14 million into 28 million or 100 million, depending on the types of rules that I'm adding. So how rules work is you need a rules file, okay? And again, you could just go and Google search rule files. There's a, a big one out there. It's called the rules to rule them all. Um, <clears throat> That's a good one to download and use. If you don't have um, a rule file, you can generate rules. And then Hashcat will generate rules, um, like a thousand rules here on its own. So again, I'm just gonna go out here real quick to Google. Google's my friend. And I'm gonna do, um, I probably don't have to use the keyword Hashcat, but uh, Hashcat rules. Here's the one I mentioned before. It's on notsosecure.com. Sounds like a good site to go to. Notsosecure.com. An eight GPU system broke 500 billion hashes per second. That is insane. Um, so what this the rule to rule them all does is it includes these popular rules. And so I, I'm not sure where the download is. But I could download this. And I could add it. Actually, this is a good good little site here. Um, goes through and it shows you how it's how it's tweaking. Um, so it will delete the first character, or it will change the first character, or it will you know add something to the end. And that's what uh, what the rules are are doing for you. I'm not going to take the time to download a rule file. I'm just going to generate the rules. What's our download link? At the bottom. There we go. Yes, I just got to stop being lazy and go all the way to the end. <clears throat> so I can go to the file. This one right here. Again, the way I found to download it is to just, uh, well, what is this clipboard? Right click on the raw, save target as. Uh, one rule to rule them all. I should probably put this in my Hashcat directory. I have a rule subfolder. I can dub. Um, well, they, they contain a bunch of rules already. Forgot about those. And so I can come back here and I can start to add some rules. Where is 
How come I'm not seeing it? Oh, because I'm in the wrong area. Duh. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to use that rule. And again, I could add multiple rules here if I want. So since I have a rule file, I won't generate any. Um, so my input file that I'm specifying is that password list one that I put up on the class shell. The output file I need to specify, and something to keep in mind is the, the output file has to exist already. Um, so I can't just put a file name here and expect it to create it. So what I usually do is just you know right click, do a new text file, give it a name. I'm gonna call it output one two three. Once it's created, you can select it. And so I'm gonna input. The password list has a bunch of MD5 hashes. It's going to output, if it finds results, to output one, two, three onto my desktop. My hash type, which I've identified as MD5. And if I want to run this, I just hit reverse engineer. I put that on the class shell under that NCL section. Yeah, you might have to refresh. Um, other types of options you have, you have your straight word list. Again, that's what you're probably going to use for NCL. You have combination. Um, which uses multiple word lists and combines them, I believe, into a larger word list. You have brute force, which is just going to try password after password after password. I want to spend just a little bit of time on this brute force here. What brute force does, again, trying password after password after password, but we need to specify the character sets that we want to use. And inside of the Hashcat directory under the help, which I think it's in the GUI, it talks a little bit about this. I know you can do a Google search on it too. Here are the built-in character sets. So right now the character set being used is a question mark L, question mark well, question mark L is all lowercase characters. So when it tries to brute, for, brute force, it's going to use lowercase characters. And then it's also going to use numbers, the digits. That's what I say the D stands for. I don't know if that's official, but that's what I say. And so it's only going to try lowercase and the numbers. Well, if I want to use uppercase along with that and maybe special characters, I need to choose those character sets. And so I either can do a pull down here and say, okay, I want um, numbers and uppercase, and I want numbers and lowercase, and I choose my character sets, and I can download other character sets if I want using character files if they don't exist here. Okay, and so I'm not seeing, for example. Um, eight bit characters from German, which is the question mark capital D. I would have to go download that character set and add it because I'm, again, I'm not seeing that in my list of options. Um, and then it talks about a mask. So what a mask attack does for you, hope I'm explaining this correctly, but a mask attack uses some AI, if you will, for your brute force. So it's not just going to try essentially password after password after password after password. It's going to make a little bit more sense out of it and use more uh, widely used characters first, right? So it's probably rare that a, a user has a, a Q or a Z or an X in their password. 
So it will wait for those at the end to try them. And so it uses again a little bit of, I'll say AI to make your brute forcing more efficient. Uh, hybrid gets into hybrid character sets, maybe along with a password list. So you can take the rock you and then uh, use that in conjunction with a brute force. So again, you have a lot of options. Again, I'm not an expert in this. I'm just trying to give you a little quick insight. Uh, but there are very good tutorials on Hashcat's website. People, you know, are all about this in forums and whatnot. So confident that you can find information on these options if you want or need to. Based on my option, I'm just going to click generate here. Oh, I get the unhandled exception. Dang you. Blaming you on it. Yeah. Never gotten this yet. Shoot. Let me just see if I can reverse hit. What, what all you really need to do is just hit reverse engineer. And then what we'll do is we'll spin up the command. So let me open it up here real quick. Maybe something got corrupt when I moved it over. I moved it from my one shell over to this shell. So maybe that happened. Okay, it's got my same options as last time. Hit reverse engineer. Oh, there it goes. So starting Hashcat, I'm getting some warnings. That went too fast. Um, so the status is it cracked all of those passwords and it cracked it in like one second, I guess. But I did get some warnings, which I want to talk about here real quick. This is for the for the protection of really your machine. Uh, for your machine and to get accurate results, I probably should say too. So my particular machine has two graphics cards or graphics devices, I should say. My device number one is an NVIDIA Quadro RTX 4000. And um, the NVIDIA picks out an error and it tells me that the CUDA SDK toolkit installation has not been detected. CUDA SD, SDK toolkit installation required is required for proper device support and utilization. Um, since it cannot find that, it's falling back to using the OpenCL runtime. Well, then I get a message about the OpenCL runtime having the incorrect driver and having some, some issues. So then I get a warning, uh, kernel exec timeout is not disabled. This may cause CL out of resources or related area, area uh, errors to disable the timeout to see this um, timeout patch. My second device is my integrated Intel uh, UHD graphics P630. Okay. Well, what Hashcat realizes is that my first device is much better and it's going to try to use that. Um, it also gets a message here that I cannot detect uh, the fan speed for my graphics card. And what I should do at this point is try to correct all of these issues. Um, so I should go and download the CUDA SDK toolkit, uh, which I actually did the other day. I just didn't install it yet. Let me go ahead and install that. And what you'll find is after you correct all of your issues and errors, this isn't right. Well, I guess you guys don't need to watch me do that, but um, once you correct all your issues and errors, you're going to get much better performance. You're going to get better accuracy. You're going to protect your equipment a little bit better because now it can check out, you know, how hot it's getting and the fan speeds and those sorts of things. Um, so sifting through this. It essentially tells me that it ended up uh, cracking it. And where it put the results then is in that output file. And my output file shows my hashes and then it shows the passwords that pertain to those hashes. So for NCL, they're going to give you a bunch of hashes. 
you crack those hashes and put the passwords and then you get your points. Um, what else did I want to mention here? Lost my train of thought. Oh, I know I was going to mention. Uh, the benchmark. So if you go over to the command line uh, tab, there is a benchmark that you can generate. So it's just hashcat.exe-b-w3, and you can run uh, that benchmark. And I should have my thing plugged in, but I don't. Um, this is something I would probably run right at the very beginning to see what your benchmarks are. Then go and correct all of your issues or warnings, run that benchmark again and see if you've improved your performance. And then like most people in IT, they want to start tweaking and get better performance. You end up spending a bunch of money on a new graphics card and more RAM and all those, those sorts of things. And you can you know, gauge your performance over time uh, running this. And so it, for me, it's going to go through and it's going to run a benchmark on both of my cards. And so the first one here, if I scroll back up, for MD5, my NVIDIA Quadro can do 6, 000, keeps going 6,587 million hashes per second. And for where I'm at, uh, NTL, NTLM version two, Windows passwords, it can do 689 million hashes per second. And so it's gonna go through all the different types of passwords and it's gonna give you a benchmark of that. So questions with where we're at right now. Anybody got any tips or pointers or other things that they use? Yeah. So one of the um, for part of this for National Cyber League, you'll be asked to create hashes for based off of every um, the Pokemon character. That one's not bad. The, the one that's the, the, the modern one is okay. Make the yourself. Python script and um, you can you get a referral, grab every name, you can cut the column, I'll put that to a new file. Scrape it from a website or something? Yeah. And then the part that I'm stuck on is trying to add some digits. Okay. But um, yeah, that one works pretty well. So for that to add the two digits at the end. I'm I'm gonna keep the Jamie on that how to add that into a Python script to add every like Zero 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 one to every single string of every agreement. You could go and do a hybrid attack on that if you wanted to. So you could specify your word list that you create, and then you could add your characters. Actually, I don't even have to do that. Um, I can just use my uh, under. These aren't loading. But I can just use my character set of question mark D, right? And that's going to, going to append it um, at the end. And for my mask, I would probably just want to do question mark D, question mark D. Click the appropriate character set. And so now I want to try two digits appended to the back of this word list. Like my syntax could be off, but you know, there's an option within Hashcat to maybe do that. Um, another combination too is you, you know, another option you can do the combination attack, have your word list uh, for the left side, and then the right side would then be your digits. I think the Crypto Kate um, help file gets into how to do that as well. I think I remember reading something about that once upon a time. So maybe check that out too. Uh, where was I? So 
So yeah. Um, any other questions, comments, or anything? Okay, let me get into National Cyber League here quick then. Okay, so I'm in National Cyber League. Here's the um, the gym. Here's the password cracking. There's five challenges. There's 30 questions. And so over here on the right hand side, can I move these? Okay, nice. It says our analysts obtained password dumps storing hacker passwords after obtaining a few plain text passwords. It appears that they overlap with passwords from the Rock U breach. Okay, so there's again a hint. I can use the Rock U password uh, file. And so what I would probably do for this is I would put all of these into a text file. So password NCL1, I'm just calling it. So where dual, dual monitors are nice. Oh. And I'm just gonna go and copy and paste these over. appeared to be MD5 for me. Again, if I don't know, just take one. If I still have that site up, dump it into here. Probably put them all in here and it's going to crack them for me. It actually didn't give me the answer. So it says MD5. I'm gonna go back to my word list. I'm using MD5. Um, do straight word list. Check out the command. So, yep, so I'm gonna do straight word list. Hash type zero. Okay, um, so I'm gonna run that command. Again, I should, I should correct my errors, I really should. Oh, I forgot to do an output file. Maybe it appended it. Let's see. All hashes found in pot file, use the dash dash to display them. So I don't know that I will actually get any output, but let me see. Okay, so a hash cat keeps, a, keeps track of a pot file, which basically means if it's already seen this hash uh, from a previous session, it doesn't try to uh, crack it again and so i need to disable my pot file because i've actually run this before that's what's happening for me so i'm going to disable my pot file and i might have to re remove hash uh, found hashes but let me see if this works first looks like it's working now cracked it for me here's my output Oh, there's the same hashes. <laughs> That'd be why, Matt. 
And so they're the same ones, Hustler, Trivium, Cassidy, Loved One, Poppy, one, two, three. So they aren't updating a whole lot of the practice challenges, it looks like. So gotta go back over to NCL. And put those in there, which was what? Hustler. No, it actually didn't crack the six eight one. So I'm all sorts of mixed up. I didn't change my uh, input file, you dummy. Here's my input file. There's my output file. Uh, let me clear this out. It really helps if you know what you're doing, which I don't. So let's reverse engineer that. Hash file is empty or corrupt. So I didn't like something in my hash file. Where are you? There you are. Oh, it is empty. <laughs> oh, I didn't save. I aren't very smart today. Nothing worse than watching a guy struggle on the keyboard. Sorry, guys. Okay, got them in there. Make sure I save it. Got it saved. Got the appropriate input file. Got the appropriate output file. File. Got the appropriate hash type. Using the rock you word list. Reverse engineer this thing. Okay, it's still going. And it took a little while, but I, it cracked it. I got 557 million hashes per second. So here's my results, so Joybird one. Now I'm mad because I lowered my accuracy. What? Oh, I didn't put them in the same order. See, this is where you gotta be careful. 68 is Emily BFFL1. BFFL, best friends for life, is that what that is? There we go. And so you put all those in, you'll get your your points. EC, this one is at 32 Joybird 1. Oh, yeah. Kirkles. And DD Mac. Oh, 
Um, so for these ones, there's uh, the easy one we just did, three mediums and a hard. I'll just go over here one and just take a quick look. And so this one says, our analysts have obtained Windows passwords, uh, window pa Windows password dumps storing hacker passwords. Can you crack them? And so I got a little bit different format here now, right? That I'm working with. And so again, identify what you're working with, choose your appropriate options. And uh, the Hashcat setup that we created should be successful for you. This one here is on uh, Pokemon. So again, they typically give you, you know, some some uh, some insight into what you're looking looking on. So these are based on Pokemon. I could just try my straight dictionary here and see if it works. I might have to create my own custom dictionary with Pokemon characters. And so maybe I'm doing a Google search and I'm manually copying and pasting these in. Uh, maybe you created a script or, or um, know of something that you can use in Cali to go scrape a website. Drawing a blank with the built-in scraper. There's a couple of them in Cali. Um, but you could go and scrape a website like Wikipedia with all the Pokemon characters' names and build out your dictionary that way. But the point is you got to have the appropriate dictionary. What is the hard one? Is this the one you were talking about? Law and Order SVU? Uh, S Law, and S Sorry, Law and Order SVU episodes and end in two digits. If you can find the list, there's a list of every... Um, I wrote a Python script that has it all. I W the page that has everything. I cut the columns one through three off. Okay. And then but the one part I couldn't get the script to do, but I could I could and get the file to work right. But I want the script to add every um, every character something. Yeah, I'd be interested if, once you get that created, if you would, wouldn't mind sharing it, that'd be excellent to take a look at. I want to, I just want to pull this up real quick before I stop. I want to say she goes through, I think she uses Excel to do it, not Python, but that's what I wanted to look. Crypto password. Maybe not. Maybe it was something else that I was looking at and not this document. But I do want to say that she ended up using Excel. She uses Excel a lot for a lot of these. She recommends, uh, says, if you're comfortable attempting to use Kelly Linux, then I highly recommend Crunch Word List, Word List Generator. It takes a few seconds and one command to generate the entire list, much less work than Excel. So again, I really just, I like this, uh, this coaching guide and I like her approach because she doesn't use a lot of fancy tools and you, you know, again, you don't need to. Can you use fancy tools and are you going to be more efficient and quicker? Yes, absolutely. And I, I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to get to that point. But when you're very first starting out and you're not quite sure, like she says, use, use what you know and uh, use the tools you're familiar with, and if that's something as simple as Notepad, then by all means do it. 